I've bought a lot of really dumb things for this channel, but I think this might be the dumbest. This video is sponsored by Hawthorne, a premium tailored cologne brand. Take a quick quiz and they'll tailor two fragrances specifically to your interests. Stay tuned until later in the video and I have an exclusive offer for you guys. This is, or maybe was, a 2017 13 inch MacBook Pro and I have to say, I think this could be one of the most thoroughly destroyed MacBooks I've ever taken a look at. We've done some repair videos here on the channel, but I don't think anything that I've looked at has come anywhere near this amount of destruction. The touch bar itself is cracked, the display is annihilated, and the entire chassis is bent at angles that I didn't think were possible. There's massive dents in the sides. The display and the top case are somehow bent at different angles. The thing is so thoroughly destroyed that you can even see small shards of aluminum that are wrapped around the case screws where the bottom cover was torn from the machine. So you may be wondering why I bought a thoroughly demolished MacBook such as this. And well, the reason is simple, it works. Or at least that's what the seller told me. We're gonna see if this machine actually powers up. Now, the display is destroyed, but fortunately, I've got this USB-C external monitor. I've used this a couple times. I'll link it down in the description below if this is something that you might find useful. And now we're gonna actually see if this thing will boot. So the backlight is on. Well, it does in fact appear that somehow this thing actually boots. Now, I don't hear the fans. Let's just check on the underside here. Oh, okay, yeah. I don't know if you can hear this, but that fan is stuck. So I think these fans might be toast. So given that the logic board appears to be working, we should be able to replace all of the bent and broken components and actually restore this computer. So. I bought a display assembly, and I bought a bottom case, which this doesn't even have. And I also bought a top case assembly, so these are all of the major components, aside from the logic board, obviously, and we should actually be able to repair it. And I did also notice that even though these fans are absolutely destroyed, the top case that I bought does have fans on it. So this is probably going to be one of the most stressful repairs I've ever done. So without any further ado, let's begin. I start by carefully extracting the logic board. As I work around the board, disconnecting and unscrewing it, I'm very careful not to flex or damage the board, and you can see as it bends back into place despite being screwed into this warped frame. Fortunately, I'm able to remove it safely from the top case, and somehow, the board isn't permanently bent from its time in there. The next step is to harvest the Touch ID button from the top case, because it's tied to the logic board on these machines, so I'll need to use it in the new frame. I also decide to harvest the trackpad because there's nothing wrong with it, it works perfectly fine. It's held in place with 10 screws and it comes out without much difficulty. While I'm in there I notice that the plastic clips that hold the bottom case on have been ripped off and are stuck in the top case. Next it's on to the display assembly, which is completely trashed. Despite this I need to save the antenna assembly and all the screws that hold it together to use in the renovated computer. The antenna is held on with 12 teeny teeny tiny P2 pentalobe screws that are an absolute pain to get off. But once they're gone, it's time to remove the display assembly from the busted top case.
Well, at this point, the Trashed Book Pro is as disassembled as it needs to be. I've got it all laid out in front of me, and honestly, I still can't get over the shape of this top case. I'm amazed that it didn't completely bend and mangle the logic board, because this is just not a good shape. I've also pulled out the good stuff like the trackpad and the Touch ID button from the mangled casing, so at the very least we'll be able to salvage those pieces. I want to save as much as humanly possible. Uh, so the next plan is to reassemble the working components and make a fully functioning MacBook. But man, at this point am I tired. If you ever work on stuff like this, especially stressful, non-standard disassemblies, you can get pretty flustered. If only I had some premium tailored cologne of some sort to keep me smelling fresh during this whole process. Oh, wait a minute. Do you also get all gross when repairing MacBooks that have been run over by a bus? Hi, I'm Fancy Luke, and I'm here to tell you about today's video sponsor, Hawthorne, a premium tailored cologne brand. All you have to do is take their quiz, which will ask you simple questions about your hygiene and lifestyle, including how often you shower, your skin type, and even your favorite drink. They offer free shipping with their orders, and if you're not happy with your scents, they'll retailer them based on your feedback. Mine smells like freshly cut logs. And today I've got an extra fancy discount code for you fancy folks. If you use code LUKE10 at checkout, you can get 10% off your first order. And now that I'm feeling fresh, let's hop back into the repair. And now it's time to start reassembly. I'll start by attaching the new display to the new top case with the screws and antenna I salvaged from the trashed one. Then it's time to painstakingly reinsert the logic board and plug in all of the connectors. Ha, <laughs> we have a problem. So, as you can see, the machine is booting. Yay! Good, right? I mean, yes, it is good that it works, which means that I didn't destroy it and it wasn't already destroyed, so that's a good thing. However, the touch bar does not work on this top case. And you can tell that because, well, for one, it's blank and is not on, so that's your first clue. But then again, you're probably thinking, oh, Luke, I'm sure you did something wrong because you're just an idiot. Yeah, okay, you're right, I am an idiot. But not this time, because I opened up the machine and I looked at the touch bar connector, and the thing is shot. It's very clearly damaged. And there's really no way for me to replace just the touch bar because, well, look at I fix it. It's a mess, and I'm not doing that. So I said, you know what, fine. I'm returning this, the seller accepted that they sold me a bad top case, I'm gonna return it and replace it with this, which is a brand new, not a used top case like this one was. So this, I can look at the connector and say, okay, good, the touch bar, that's good, it's gonna work. Uh, I did have to swap in, I bought some more fans for 20 bucks and used the fan screws from the old broken top case. I also stole the Thunderbolt 3 ports from the old top case. And this one, you can see it's brand new, look at this, it's got like this little, plastic cover over the battery, so that's pretty cool. This should be a brand new top case with a brand new battery, so that's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, we're gonna have to literally do this entire repair again. I'm gonna have to fully disassemble this computer and reassemble it into here. So that is a real pain, and I'm not pleased with the seller from whom I bought this top case, because that is really poor work on their part. But nonetheless, let the repair commence.
It is kind of hard to believe that this is the same MacBook as the mangled wreck that I showed you at the beginning of this video, but nevertheless, here it is. Now I suppose in fairness, saying the same MacBook is a bit of a misnomer because the, well, everything that you touch has been replaced. Screen, top case. Okay, actually no, no, the Touch ID. You touch that and that is the original MacBook, but everything else has been replaced. And the MacBook that it is, is actually kind of interesting because obviously you've seen that this is a 2017 Touch Bar MacBook Pro, but I haven't told you the full specs. So this is the 3.3 gigahertz dual core i5, and it's upgraded with the 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 500 gigabyte hard drive. So it actually is decently upgraded. And you're probably wondering at this point how much this whole process cost. Well, the goal of this particular video was restoration. It wasn't really to show you guys any cool trick that you can try. I've done that a couple times in the past, and obviously that's not really the case here because it's gonna be kinda hard to find a similar situation as someone who apparently just ran over their MacBook with a car. So it's not exactly a situation that you might be able to replicate, but all told, it ended up costing about $820 to build this computer. Not bad. The most nerve wracking part was definitely the initial disassembly because we were at a point where the computer was working, but with a board that was flexed that bad, there's really no telling what could happen. Honestly, the angle at which the board was bent was probably the most that you could get without causing serious damage. Cause you gotta remember that along pretty much the whole width of the device runs the heat sink and the heat pipe, which is a lot more rigid than the logic board itself. So what can happen is if it's really, really bent, that would basically just press down and possibly crack the CPU die. So it could have been a lot worse and unbending a board that's been bent like that could end up damaging it. But fortunately that didn't happen here. I would say if you do want to take on a serious repair where you have an absolutely mangled MacBook, definitely make sure that it powers on, that it boots up, and try to confirm as many functions as you can. Now that was not something that I did here, and it was a little bit risky, because MacBooks like this, there's a lot of things that are connected to it. There's a ton of connections on the inside that could get damaged. There was a very real possibility that something like the display connector or the Thunderbolt ports had been ripped off and damaged a connector on the board. And that is not really something that I would be able to repair because once a component on the board is damaged, I can't really replace that without replacing the board. Fortunately, that wasn't the case here. And you also have to keep in mind, a lot of people with a, a repair such as this might say, well, what was the point of buying the destroyed MacBook if you replaced all of the outside components? You could have just bought a logic board and put it in and just bought the parts individually. So why? bother with the broken MacBook anyway. Well, as you guys saw, there were a lot of parts that came from the broken MacBook besides just the functional logic board, the antenna, the touch ID button, all of the Thunderbolt ports, the screws, literally every single screw that holds this thing together came from that computer. And you wouldn't get those components if you were just buying the logic board. So overall, this was definitely a fun and satisfying project. I always like seeing a poor, beaten down MacBook restored to its former glory. And honestly, I was surprised at how well this went aside from the whole top case snafu that required me to completely disassemble and reassemble the entire computer again. That was annoying. But apart from that, it was a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think of this project in the comment section below. And as usual, don't forget to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani and check out my subreddit in the description below. I'll also link down there the toolkit that I used to do this entire disassembly. It's the iFixit toolkit, fantastic kit. So that's linked down below. And with that, I'll see you all in the next video.